Welcome to the third and final chapter of this, I guess, series that I originally was going to make about cancelled TV shows in general, but then I realized that I don't actually watch any TV, so... Although, I guess cancelled has a very different meaning when it comes to television, doesn't it? Just to clarify, this is not going to be a video where I complain about cartoons that were cut short after, like, a few seasons or whatever. Otherwise, I'd just be going on about Spectacular Spider-Man or Transformers Animated for 45 minutes. I'm pretty sure I already did in one of those older, crappier top 5 videos I used to do anyway, god. But I instead wanted to focus on cartoons that were just straight up never made at all. But again, much like with the last two videos, I'm really gonna be stretching my definition of cancelled here to include things like pitches, which really didn't get very far at all, but I still wanted to bring up anyway, okay? But unlike movies and games, unmade TV shows generally have the added benefit of having a pilot, which for those who don't watch excessive amounts of Blame It On George videos like me, are basically like a mock-up of an episode that they make to sort of give executives an impression of whether it's worth turning into a full show or not. A pilot is better more for giving like a rough idea of what the concept of a show is like instead of an entirely accurate representation of what the final thing would have looked like. Because a lot of now popular shows had pilots that were pretty different to what they ended up being. But at the very least for some of these we do have footage of what they may have hypothetically looked like. Now I want to apologize in advance for this video because uh, just to be completely transparent with you I got really sick while I was working on this and so I think it's going to come off more like a fucking book report. I lost my voice and it still doesn't quite sound right. Uh, so if I sound a bit weird in this video again, then uh, sorry about that. But I did the best I could and I hope you still enjoy it. But before we get into it, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. If you're like me and concerned about your privacy on public or home Wi-Fi because I don't want anyone to see me browsing r slash dank memes, then do I have the app for you? I'm pretty confident that if you've watched enough YouTube by now, you know what a VPN is, but just in case, it's an app that basically creates like a secure connection between your device and the internet to make sure you're browsing online more safely. And it has added threat protection which blocks like annoying intrusive ads and trackers and gives you the option to scan every file you download for malware. Nord's got over 5,000 servers across 59 countries and can be used across six different devices on every major platform in OS. You can use it to access videos or games that aren't available in your country by changing your virtual location. Australian government be damned. I've used Nord for like almost a couple years now. It's not just some random thing I've never used before. So I'm honestly pretty confident in recommending it to you guys. It just gives me a lot of peace of mind knowing that my ISP doesn't know I'm on Twitter for like 24 hours a day. I mostly use it for streaming services like Netflix since it's no secret by now that America and Japan have it way better than the rest of the world. I'll leave all the codes and links you need down below if you're interested. Nord is offering an exclusive deal for new users where you get one month free and if you do try it and you're still not happy they're offering a 30 day money back guarantee if you use my code NordVPN slash Diamond Bolt. Just look that one up and it'll take you straight to the deal. Alright sweet and back to the video. Okay so starting us off with video game adaptions, the infamous Kickstarter disaster Mighty Number no. 9 was originally going to be much more of a franchise than it ended up being, with its creator Keiji Inafune hoping for a huge amount of tie-in media that was being worked on around the time the game came out, with an anime and manga, a movie with legendary pictures in 2015 that never went anywhere, and the one that had the most progress made on it, Mighty Number no. 9 The Animated Series, first announced in 2014 with a teaser on their YouTube channel. This wasn't a trailer showing off completed scenes from the show or anything, but more just a concept showing off off what it would have looked like. Uh, I think there's been a mistake. And it kind of gives me the impression that it was going to be this kind of fourth wall breaking self aware comedy series, which is sort of also what the original trailer for the game came off like. So, what do you think? Are you ready to play? I'm ready. No one's talking to you, Vernon! And everybody loved that so much. Obviously, this one was cancelled though, because, I mean, you know. One of the more mysterious ones in this video were two rumored Nintendo shows in 2015 that sort of just quietly disappeared as quickly as information about them came out. A live action Legend of Zelda series was supposedly in the works at Netflix, which hold on, yes I know, I'm getting to the point. Apparently someone on the team couldn't help not shutting up about it, which caused Nintendo to completely abandon the entire series to stop further leaks from getting out, which has to be the dumbest possible reason to not make something ever. Oh, well if people are gonna find out about it, then we're just not gonna make it at all. And this also affected a Claymation Star Fox series being worked on by College Humor at the time, which was scrapped because of that same news getting out. And they didn't even get to work on it for a month before Nintendo pulled the plug, even though it was an entirely separate project. As far as I'm aware, none of this information has been confirmed on Nintendo's end, but I mean, given their track record of decisions, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, so this next one is a bit more up in the air with a lot of unconfirmed details, so just take everything I say with a lot more skepticism, okay? But it's on Wikipedia, so if I'm going 
down. A Crash Bandicoot animated series was allegedly in development between Activision and Amazon Studios that leaked onto... <laughs> Reddit in 2021 in the form of some test footage which allegedly was abandoned because of some unconfirmed script disputes. There are two different versions of this test footage that exists with the second one having improved visuals like more detail with the lighting work. And again, it could just be a really well done fan animation, but I just thought I'd put it in here just in case. There was a Team Fortress 2 series being worked on by Happy Guillotine Studios and Machinima in 2014, but that's almost the whole extent of what's known about this one aside from this one single screenshot on the Lost Media Wiki and about 2.5 five milliseconds of footage from the company's promo reel. The incredible premise was apparently about three gamers who would get isekai'd into Team Fortress 2. I'm fairly sure this one was never going to be shown on TV and probably just would have been a web series, with apparently all of its eight planned episodes being written and entirely voiced, but only one of them was ever animated completely. The studio has said that they might release the first episode and try to crowdfund the other seven, but uh... That was in 2016, so... Now with movie tie-in cartoons, I'm still amazed at how many completely misguided attempts there were in the 80s and 90s at turning popular movies into children's franchises. And this almost happened with the Alien series, which actually had its own toy line, which attempted to market the incredibly violent and scary space horror movie to small children. A cartoon series called Operation Aliens was planned that was meant to accompany the toy line for the second movie in 1986. Though the only proof of it are some low-quality images of the pilot that look like the most hilarious attempt at dumbing down a series to kids since Mortal Kombat. At least that's what I thought until I did a little bit more research, as in the website below the first result on Google. As it turns out, these screenshots are actually from an unaired commercial for the toy line and there was never going to be a cartoon at all. It's just been a long-standing rumor on the internet sourced from a misunderstanding about where these images come from. Aww. Escape from Jurassic Park is another one that didn't make it, but the idea for this one was pretty ambitious from the sounds of it. The creators wanted to merge both CGI and hand-drawn animation for a series that would air on primetime television, in order to make it more accessible for all ages and not just children, as they wanted it to be taken seriously and not just be there to sell toys. Apparently a trailer was made for it that's probably still floating around out there somewhere, but for now all we have of it are some concept art of the characters that look pretty much exactly what you'd expect. Reportedly this trailer was sent to Steven Spielberg, but they said he didn't even bother to watch it, so without his blessing, this one kind of just fizzled out. When Disney's Atlantis The Lost Empire made just barely shy of a billion dollars, they had to scrap their planned Team Atlantis cartoon series that would have seen the cast of the movie encountering different legends from various cultures, which has nothing to do with what the movie is about at all, but hey, we'll roll with it. One of the episodes was even going to cross over with Disney's Gargoyles, but in the end, they actually mashed the three completed episodes together and released them as Atlantis 2 Milo's Return, which is why that movie feels like three completely random unrelated stories. One of the more bizarre entries in all three of these videos is Star Wars Detours, because unlike others that didn't make it past concepts or a pilot, 39 whole episodes of it have been entirely completed with a further 62 scripted, but for some reason has just never come out. Detours was meant to be a series of comedic skits set between the prequel and original trilogy that was meant to release in 2013. An episode of Detours leaked online in 2020, but as it stands at the moment, there's apparently no interest from Disney in ever releasing this series, even though it honestly just seems like the kind of thing they could just dump onto Disney Plus without any issue. So until then, it's just kind of sitting there. Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. And starting off our obligatory superhero segment is DC, who have had plenty of scrap cartoons in the past 20 years. Like a Cartoon Network Plastic Man show that never got picked up, a Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy series in 2001, a HBO logo show which has more articles about it being cancelled than it does concept art, and two different attempts to do a Batman No Man's Land series that were both rejected for being too dark. One of the more notable ones though is Gotham High, a pitch that would have turned Batman and his rogues gallery into depressed high school students. There are character concepts and art for this one available, but it never got any further than that because from the sounds of it, DC did what I do with all of my problems and just kind of quietly ignored it until it went away. More recently was an untitled Superman series focusing on him and his family with this adorable art style that I absolutely love. These concepts are actually drawn by Sean Galloway, who was the lead designer on Spectacular Spider-Man. And along with the creator of the pitch, Vincent Huke, who has worked on more adult properties like Young Justice and the Harley Quinn show, we're aiming to make a Superman series that was much lighter in tone and for kids, but without being another Teen Titans Go. Marvel doesn't have quite as many cancelled cartoons, but I think one of the more well-known ones was in 2018 when the channel FX was developing a Deadpool animated series with Donald Glover and his brother Stephen Glover on board as the showrunners and writers. This one is generally associated with this test footage you're seeing now that recycles audio from the Ryan Reynolds movie. I've never said this, but don't swallow. 
But this was actually animated by Titmouse, the guys behind the critically acclaimed Hot Wheels The Skills to Thrill, who ultimately weren't even who Marvel was going to move forward with to work on the show. So this footage isn't really indicative of what it would have looked like if it had gone ahead. That instead would have been the guys who made Archer, which sure is an interesting pick for an action-heavy Deadpool show, but ultimately none of that even mattered because Marvel decided not to go through with this project anyway because they suck. In 2012, the animation studio behind Netflix's Castlevania Powerhouse pitched a Marvel and anthology series called Marvel Era, where each episode would have been a short with a different animation style based on the time period it was set in to commemorate Marvel's then upcoming 75th anniversary. All that exists of it is the footage you're seeing now, which was shown off on Twitter by the studio CEO, and even though they literally only show like three or so seconds of each concept, this genuinely looks like such a cool idea that would have been executed brilliantly, and I would have loved to see this as a finished product. But unfortunately, 2012 was around the time that Disney's acquisition of Marvel was still pretty fresh, and in terms of animation, they weren't really keen on that whole good ideas thing. Marvel also inadvertently affected an entirely unrelated series somewhere in 1995, as an animated show based on Image Comics' Young Blood was meant to air on Fox Kids. But this one couldn't even be considered because at the time Marvel had secured a deal with the channel to be the only comic book company that could run shows on there. Also, they could make such bangers as Avengers United They Stand and then cancel them in 13 episodes. A Micronauts animated series was in the works from Dave Johnson, the character designer for Ben 10, which is why all of this art looks so familiar. I don't really know anything about this franchise, but just from the art alone, it honestly looks pretty cool, but never went ahead because Hasbro ended up scooping up the rights to them and then proceeded to do absolutely nothing with it. Okay, and just to wrap up, here's all the other stuff I didn't really have a category for. A Kitty Bobo Show is I think one of the more well-known pilots that never got picked up that was a part of Cartoon Network's annual Big Pick competition, where they would run 10 pilots one after the other and have viewers vote on which one should get turned into a full series. But unfortunately, it went up against Kids Next Door, so this one sort of dates itself almost immediately because the entire episode is Kitty Bobo going around being an arsehole to everyone for eight minutes, bragging about his brand new cell phone. Later, dudes. Call me anytime on my cell phone. But it's still really funny even now, and I can see why people talk about this one every so often. Even if I genuinely cannot believe there was ever a time where having a phone that looked like this was something to brag about. That was our son. He has a cell phone. A what? Upon finally watching it, it is a huge shame that this one never got picked up, and maybe it could have been if it had less stiff competition that year. Yeah, I'm downtown. On my cell phone. Oh, would you give it a rest with the phone? I read that one of its two creators also went on to pitch another concept for a show more recently with Chloe and the Stars, which went up on Kickstarter and Indiegogo for funding, but unfortunately failed to meet its $35,000 goal as well. In 1993, back when executives were still under the impression that audiences had an aversion to anything not made in America, there was an idea for bringing Sailor Moon to American audiences, but instead of just dubbing it, they were going to completely remake the show to be more relatable to kids with their own cartoon version intercut with footage of live action high school segments. And they like gave them all boats because I guess they took the sailor part a little too literally. I find a great comfort in the fact that the only footage of this available has the people filming it laughing at it the entire time. <laughs> In 2015, Seth MacFarlane was working on a reboot of the Flintstones and based on the available character concepts, Look, I know it's his art style, but I can't not see this as a Family Guy cutaway gag. The most agreed upon reason as to why this one didn't happen was because McFarlane wasn't super confident with the pilot script, which I find hard to believe given that this was the guy that made Family Guy. But a funnier reason was given by him in a Reddit AMA where he said he couldn't work out a way to make a distinction between Fred Flintstone and Peter Griffin. So it literally would have just been Family Guy again. In 2008, a crossover series between Looney Tunes and Hanna-Barbera characters was pitched to Warner Brothers by Animaniacs creator Tom Rue that he called Mixed Nuts. <laughs> that would have been like a sketch comedy series comprised of shorts pairing together different characters. And he said he pitched this idea to the head of Warner Brothers' global licensing at the time, and he actually got the go-ahead until Warner hired a new executive who suddenly decided it was shit. But while that sucks for Tom, they did end up going forward with the Looney Tunes show in 2011 instead, which honestly, not a bad trade-off. Though it wasn't really cancelled per se so much as it just never existed, there was a Simpsons spin-off that was brought up as a possibility from the crew 
called it Tales from Springfield, which was an idea inspired by the episode where the steamed hands meme comes from that would have focused on smaller short stories about Springfield's residents instead of the Simpsons family. But then Matt Groening realized that it wasn't really feasible to expect the crew to be able to work on an entirely different show while also making The Simpsons for the next 100 years. And lastly, one of our most recent cases comes from Netflix's Great Animation Purge of 2022, when they started losing a ton of subscribers because they've been running their service into the ground, making me look at Big Mouth every time I open the fucking app, and decided that for some reason the issue lay with their animation division. These several victims were like an adaption of a book series called A Wings of Fire, and a comedy series about Mayan legends called Boons and Curses, but you bet we're still getting two more seasons of Big Mouth, baby! The most notable cancellation was Bone, which was an adaption of a 90s graphic novel series that they announced back in 2019. And I feel so sorry for its creator, Jeff Smith, because the guy has been waiting for an adaption of his work for like literally forever. There was a movie adaption in 2000 with Nickelodeon and another in 2013 with Warner Brothers that both fell through. Like, ah. Uh. Again, though, this is super recent, so I'm hoping this will be another Nimona situation where they uncancel it right after this video comes out just to make me look bad and to like, please make me look bad. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about when it comes to cancelled stuff. But hey, lost media video, eh?